So let's do a review of the um, different teeth tests and ANOVA that are going to be on this exam. And I'm going to put it in a table format so that we can um, kind of visualize it a little bit better um, in one place. So we'll make a table and the first thing we'll list out is the different kind of tests that we'll be using. And then I want to list out the different kinds of um, key words that will be found in the prompt so we know we can remind ourselves which test is warranted. I do want to talk about degrees of freedom, how that would look for the different tests. And then I want to talk about um, how we calculate it. And for most of them, it will be done in JASP. So the first test I want to talk about is a one sample T. And the one sample T is going to have keywords that look something like one sample. So it'll say something like um, a group of 25 people come and we want to know how they looked compared to a known average. So I think it's important to remember that it's going to be one sample, whereas the other stories are going to look a little different. So our degrees of freedom for um, a one sample T is going to follow the very basic model of n minus 1, where you take your sample size and you subtract 1 because we, we calculated one mean. Remember, you lose one degree of freedom for each mean that you calculate. And so the way we calculate a one sample T is in JAS, or sorry, <laughs> by hand, we'll say x bar minus mu divided by s divided by the square root of n. So remember, that's very similar to how we did a one sample z. We just changed it to be comparing it to a t distribution, and we divided by um, the standard deviation of the sample instead of the standard deviation of the population. All right, so now let's do, I'm just going to draw a line so we can make sure they're clearly separated. Now let's do a um, one, or sorry, a dependent t. So a dependent t dependent <laughs> t. We're going to see keywords that oops, typically look like before, I keep hitting a button on my pen, sorry, before and after. Um, and so if you ever see the phrase before and after, then you know for sure it has to be a dependent t because that's the only way you can analyze that. Now sometimes you might see them say that they're paired up and this is why the JASP calls it paired T. Um, it's a little more rare, but they'd have to be paired on something very specific, like they're from the same family. Um, so keep that in mind that most often we see dependent T as before and after, um, more rarely, but still can be done. We see it paired, but it'd have to be very clear that it's paired on something very um, specific. The degrees of freedom is also N minus one, but it's n minus 1, and I'm going to put the letter d here for differences because it's the number of differences. So let's say you had 10 before scores and 10 after scores. That's 20 scores, right? But I'm really only interested in the 10 different scores that emerge. So even though there's 20 scores, 10 scores were about the difference between the before and after. So this is going to be the number of different scores minus 1. So in JASP, you're going to click on t-tests. And then you're going to click on paired t-tests. And then don't forget, you're going to put after and then before in the columns so that your math comes out appropriately. So again, this is a review. So if any of these steps are confusing, go back to that specific piece in our um, lectures. But for a dependent t, you're going to click on t-test paired. And then when you have to um, elect the options to put in JASP, you're going to have it uh, go after and then before. I'd also like to remind you that um, both of these will be numbers um, in the data set that will help you remember that a dependent t is warranted. Okay, now let's do an independent t. Independent t. So keywords that might come from an independent t might be things like half. Half the people did this and half the people did that. Or you might see um, some other indication of two separate 
groups. This is why we call it an independent T, it's because they're two separate, two independent groups. So an example of that might be um, um, Republicans and Democrats. They're, they're not matched up in any way. There are two separate sets of people. So our degrees of freedom for the independent T also follows the n minus 1 format, but it's n minus 1 for each group. And now we have two groups. So we have n minus, uh, I'll put a, n minus 1 for group A and n minus 1 for group B, and we have to add them together. So our degrees of freedom always follow the n minus 1 format, but it just got a little more complicated because I have two groups here. I didn't really have two groups here. Um, for the dependency could because I wasn't really interested in the before and the after I was only interested in their resulting different score So it's still only one group, but I had to make sure I clarified that it's the different score that I'm interested in here Okay, so for uh, JATS we want to click um, T tests and this one it does call it an independent T and Then what you want to make sure you do is the dependent variable is going to be your number and then your fixed factor, well, I'm going to run out of room, is going to be um, your ordinal. And so it looks like um, an, a Venn diagram. Okay, so now let's do ANOVA, and I'm going to do that. <laughs> so for ANOVA, it's called analysis of, oops, analysis of variance. Um, here you're going to see something that says, three or more groups. So it's going to look very much like an independent T, except we're going to be talking about three or more groups because um, independent T can't handle more than two groups. So three or more groups is going to be the key there for the ANOVA. So our degrees of freedom is going to be broken into two pieces now. We have the degrees of freedom between and the degrees of freedom within. Both of them have the N minus one model, but it's just a little different looking. So the degrees of freedom between is going to be how many groups you have minus one. Um, many books will mark the number of groups as R minus one. So I'll mind, uh, maybe I'll put over here um, R equals groups. So it's still kind of a minus one factor, but this is how many groups you have minus one. The degrees of freedom within is still going to be n minus 1, but it's n minus 1 for how many groups you have. So it's just like the independent t. So you know how we had n minus 1 and then a separate n minus 1? Well, we're going to do the same thing down here for how many groups we have. So if we have three groups, it'd be n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 1. So to make that kind of a shorthand, rather than write it out every time, because ANOVA can be three or more groups, so we could get up to 15 groups theoretically, we would just say it's the total sample size, all of your n's added together, minus the number of groups you have. Okay, so then in an ANOVA, well, I totally ran out of room, um, you're going to click on ANOVA in JASP. Gosh, I keep doing, I keep skipping the V. And then um, the way you're going to enter it in is very similar to um, the t-test where you have the dependent variable. So I'll just kind of say, yeah, follow that format. Um, where you have the dependent variable and the fixed factor. And then don't forget, you're going to have to do post hoc. And so you'd have to click on the post hoc test and um, elect the appropriate um, post hoc. And remember, it's going to be between the two key and the chaffe. And you do the two key when you have equal n, and you do the chaffe when you don't. Not equal. Okay, <laughs> so the the magic of this table is that we made it together, not that it's legible after the fact. Um, but what I wanted to kind of put together in one page was how they're similar and how they're different. Um, really, we have keywords that mark whether we're looking at one group, whether we're looking at two groups, three or more groups, how the degrees of freedom differs. They all follow the N minus one format. And then what we would end up clicking on in JASP. So this table isn't the best. You might want to make your own as a cheat sheet for the exam so that you know exactly what you need to do. On the in-class portion of the exam, I won't be asking you to run JASP. 
um, because this would be hard to do during our test. But I'll be giving you screenshots and asking you what you would click on. Send me any questions so that I can make sure to get them answered.